So here we have a, a bunch of checkboxes on a UX. And uh, let's go and run this. And what we'll see is uh, I'll go ahead and uncheck un un uh, a number of checkboxes. And then I'll hide those checkboxes. Uh, now, um, the way this is all rendered, there's a lot of uh, information around each checkbox. And so we get an uneven display, which is not something that we want. We can turn those back on, show them up again. Um, so that's using the, the client side stuff. And the reason it, it works on server side show hide is, um, is because the checkbox never gets rendered in the first place. Whereas here, all 10 checkboxes get rendered and then we just turn them off. Uh, you could probably, I, I looked at doing this in, in the um, server side area and, and on the, um, on the server side on dialog render and on dialog execute actually you can actually get to the names of the um, of the checkboxes inside uh, e.tmpl but um, we don't have any values at that point that I can see so you wouldn't be able to test the uh, the value of the checkbox um, and then it'd be a little bit tricky to uh, set up a show hide expression at that point and uh, you can't use if you're looking at on dialog render for HTML um, that's a little messy to go through uh, you know fully rendered HTML and and just turn on and just set uh, display equals none but um, as we can see setting display equals none which I'm doing here won't really help you because um, it leaves a very uneven uh, result and that's not something that you want. Now there is a way to get this done but it's a bit of work um, to get it done because you need to use a container um, that surrounds each one and as as you put each container on um, you use the prevent container float and uh, you check that and that gets rid of all the extraneous stuff that's uh, that's around the uh, the actual checkbox and uh, so we'll just run this show you what this looks like so here we have our same checkboxes. I'll uncheck a bunch more of them and then um, I'll hide them. So that's the effect that you want. You want very clean stuff. You want everything to go that's, that doesn't belong there. And then we can show them up again. And this is all done client side, so uh, we're not making any calls back to the server, which is really good. Uh, however, it is a little bit of work, especially when you've got the number of checkboxes that you do have. Um, but it'll be just as fast for 100 as it is for 10. So that makes no difference. So uh, let's go and have a look uh, to see how this is uh, this is done. Um, one thing I should make note of is um, you said your your checkboxes are named uh, something like uh, anemia and diabetic so your containers would have to contain the same names as your checkboxes so in this case I've got checkbox check one as, an, as a variable name in uh, in the uh, in the checkbox, and my container for that check checkbox is going to be check one under bar container, so it's going to have to be named that because we need to match the uh, control up with the container that's surrounding it. So let's go and have a look to see what we did here. How messy my code is. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and get all the columns in our UX. So dialog object dot um, column info will give us a list of the columns. And then we're going to just loop through, uh, and that's an object uh, in JavaScript. So then we're just going to loop through them. So for um, we're going to grab all the keys in the in the object of columns. So that's cool. And then we know that um, columns is an object, and um, each key in columns uh, is an object as well so it's got a bunch of stuff in there so we've got to go and get the uh, objects for each object in columns so we're just going to keep looping through that stuff until we get to an, an object named info and that carries information about each control which is cool that's what we want and info itself is an object as well so we're going to grab that as soon as we get the object called info we're going to grab that and then inside the info object is a property named control type. 
and that's what we're really after. So we're going to grab control type and then we're going to say if the control type is equal to a checkbox, that's great, that's what we're dealing with, then we're going to go and uh, get the value of that checkbox. Uh, I don't think I need to do this. Hold on a sec. Sorry, I was thinking of something else. So, um, so here we are, we've got our uh, control type of checkbox, and so now we know we're dealing with a checkbox. So we're going to go and get the value of that checkbox, and uh, the name of our checkbox is held in key, which we started dealing with up here, so that's fine. So uh, in my case, this is going to be like check one. That's going to be the key, because that's uh, one of the columns. So in your case, it should be like anemia or glaucoma or something like that. So um, now we're going, so we go and get the value of that, um, of that uh, control. So if the, uh, the check value is false, so it's false, so we want to hide it. So we go and get the object, a uh, container object. Um, so we get a pointer to the key, which is check one in my case, plus um, a static value of underbar container. So that's why it's important that your container be named the same thing as your, um, as your control name. So check one underbar container is the name of my container. So we're going to go and get a pointer to that and there we're going to set its style.display property equal to none. So we're going to hide it. And because we checked the um, this property over here, because we checked this property here, it'll hide everything. So I'll just pop back in here. Sorry, unchecked. So we're just going to loop through all the controls. We're going to recognize which ones are checkboxes. We're going to get the value of the checkbox. If it's false, we're going to get a pointer to the container. And then we're going to set that container value to none. And that's going to hide it. And then to show everything, it's pretty much exactly the same thing. Once again, grab all the columns from column info, loop through them, recognize when we've got a checkbox, get its value. If its value is false, then grab the container and set its display property to, uh, to block. So that's going to show it back up again. So once again, if we go and have a look, So we're going to uncheck a bunch of them, hide them, show them. And that's exactly the effect that you want to have. And again, it's a little bit of work, but um, nice and fast, easy, no, no callbacks involved, which is probably something you want to do. But uh, again, it is a little bit of work. All right, thanks for watching.